Greetings, dear friends. Another Flipper Zero Multi-Tool has been sent for repair. If I'm not mistaken, this is the third such device on my channel. The owner reported that he dropped the device underwater, after which it began draining quickly. Over time, the battery has swollen, some contacts have rotted, and it's unclear whether all the functions are working. My task is to restore this device. Currently, it only powers on when connected to the charger. This large gap indicates that the battery is swollen. There is no significant current draw when connected to the charger. Obviously, the battery is not charging now. That's all for now. I'll begin solving this device's problems, starting with the most obvious one, the swollen battery. I disassemble the case. Before doing this, I remove the memory card to avoid damaging it. Next, I unscrew the screws and remove the cover. Then I unscrew a couple more screws and remove the internals from the case. I perform a visual inspection of the electronic circuit boards. Overall, I haven't seen any problems so far. I disconnect the power supply, the interboard cable, and remove the electronics board where the display is located. When these flippers get wet, the regular board suffers, as moisture seeps through the gaps in the button pushers. I inspect the condition of the interboard cable contacts. Some of the pins show signs of corrosion, so it's best to replace that cable. This isn't a problem for me, as I still have new, identical cables from the previous repair. The second cable is in good condition and doesn't require replacement. I then remove the swollen battery. It's obvious they were about to replace it. The labeled cover is clearly torn, but for some reason they didn't do it. Battery model UB753665. Dimensions, 65mm long, 36mm wide, and 7.5mm thick. At the time of repair, I couldn't find any such batteries for sale, so I had to look for compatible models that were at least roughly the same dimensions. I settled on model 703565. It's advertised as having a capacity of 2200 mAh. When the battery arrived, I compared it to the old one. Overall, everything was fine, except the new one is slightly longer than the old one, literally a couple of millimeters. But that could easily be enough to make installing the new battery impossible or significantly complicate the process. I didn't have much choice. The other batteries were much smaller, and therefore, their capacity was significantly lower. So, we'll work with what we have. To install the battery, you need to transfer the BMS board from the old one, as they have different BMSs. One is a three-wire board with a temperature sensor, and the other is a two-wire board. Replacing the BMS isn't really a problem. It's just important not to confuse the positive and negative terminals of the battery and the board, and you need to pack the board well so it doesn't add to the battery's dimensions. Otherwise, just do as it was from the factory. You definitely can't go wrong. I'm installing the battery in the case. It turned out pretty well. The battery didn't fit like the original, of course, because it's longer. It fits a bit more tightly in the case. But I don't think this will cause any problems when using the device. Okay, let's move on to the board with the display. I removed the cover and noticed that all the buttons had been replaced. They installed a slightly different type of micro switches than the factory ones. But again, it's not a big deal. These will work just fine too, if you solder them properly. I had some minor issues with that one though. I had to re-solder the pins to prevent any issues with the buttons, like soldering coming off and causing them to malfunction. I also noticed a stain on the display. It looks like someone tried to replace the buttons with a heat gun, which was a fatal mistake, but it's good that the display didn't lose functionality from overheating. I also noticed that something bad had happened to the battery connector, as if its pins had been broken and then soldered onto a jumper. So, I re-soldered it. If you use the connector carefully, you shouldn't have any problems. Otherwise, everything is fine so far. I soldered a couple more components, and that's it. I can assemble the device and test it. Before assembling the case, I checked the basic functions. Upon first launch, the Dolphin displayed a message about a problem with Mr. Battery. But after restarting, no more such messages appeared. When connected to the charger, the battery charges. The charging current is 868 milliamperes, 
judging by the readings on the device itself. After checking the basic functions and confirming there were no obvious problems, I reassembled it in the case. After assembly, I tested it again, found no problems, and was about to complete the repair. However, the next day, after a full charge, I noticed an unpleasant issue. The battery charge dropped from 100% to 93%. This was despite the device being turned off, and over the course of a week, the charge dropped to 43%. Perhaps many would turn a blind eye to this, but I believe this is a clear and critical flaw in the device. It shouldn't discharge so quickly when turned off. In other words, the battery will drain to zero in a couple of weeks. Then it will deep discharge, and maybe even swell again. This can't be allowed. So, let's figure out what the problem is. I disassembled the device, removed the board housing the display, soldered the power wires to the battery connector, and now I'm checking the current consumption. When the device is turned on, the current is 30 milliamperes. This can be considered normal. However, when the device is turned off, the consumption remains at 8 milliamperes. This is abnormal. The consumption when turned off should be tens of microamps, which my lab power supply won't even detect. It will simply show zero. So, some component is consuming current when the device is turned off. The current is very small, so I couldn't detect the hot spot with a thermal imager. My leak detection method, which I used when repairing Sony headphones, helped. This method involves increasing the current consumption by heating the problematic component. First, I used a hairdryer to locate the area with the problematic component. Next, I used a soldering iron to identify the culprit, heating each component in the area. It turned out to be a small BG microcircuit. It's much smaller than the microcircuits, which made the search a bit more difficult. Apparently, moisture had gotten underneath it, forming conductive oxides. First, I'll try re-soldering the microcircuit with a generous amount of flux to clean the pins underneath. If the situation isn't too serious, that should be enough. I use an FCNC 559. By the way, links to my consumables and tools are in the description. If you need anything else for the job, check it out, you might find something useful. The small nozzle didn't heat the board sufficiently, and I didn't want to increase the temperature and flow rate too much, as this could cause something to blow off the board. I used a larger, 10 mm nozzle. I wiggled the microcircuit, and the solder underneath melted, meaning the procedure is complete. Incidentally, it wasn't visible on camera, but while soldering, I noticed a cloudy, light gray flux coming out from under the chip. It looked like it was oxidized, so hopefully the defect will disappear. I washed off the spent flux and checked the operation. Now there's no current consumption with the device turned off. More precisely, there is current, of course, but my LPP indicator doesn't detect it. And the current has dropped even with the device turned on. It used to be 30 milliamperes, and now it's only 25. I fully charged the battery. I'll check the charge the next day. And the day after that, right before sending the device back to the owner. Well, dear friends, there's no self-discharge now, and that completes my repair for today. Thank you all for your attention, and see you at other repairs. Until next time.